Hello, folks. This is David Hurley of EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer, talking to you on what's today, uh, Sunday, the 12th of May 2019. I'm just about to take you through a game I played last Wednesday. Um, I was playing as black against my regular opponent, who was therefore playing as white. And uh, he led with e4. So I responded with my customary French defense. And we got this uh, set up here. And um, I was wondering if my opponent would advance the pawn here, advance the e pawn, and then I would move my knight to uh, d2, uh, sorry, d7. Um, that didn't happen. We had this bishop move here. Um, and I responded immediately with c5. Now, Lychess is recommending that uh, white simply take that pawn and we would get an exchange something like this. The uh, uh, counter pawn exchange in the center. Uh, we've got this line here. The queen is looking at the queen through the bishop. Uh, we get this exchange. The queens take, the king moves over. The uh, pawn is recaptured by the bishop who is now threatening uh, this pawn down here. And so the king steps in to protect it. And we have a pretty open game here. But that is not what happened. What we had instead was um, rather a big blunder. Because if we check out the position of this bishop, you'll see that um, this bishop has only one exit route, and that's back here. And so if this square is blocked, the bishop will be stuck in the center. And uh, that is, in fact, what happened. Uh, we had this move here. Um, the knight came through, knight to g2, trapping the bishop. And so immediately I responded with um, c4. Goodbye, good bishop. Let's just erase those marks. So the moral of this story is uh, keep your eyes open when developing in those early stages. If you've moved your bishop into the center, you don't want to trap your bishop, uh, which is precisely what happened in this game. Now, it looks as if uh, white may have a get out, which is what was attempted by advancing the uh, e-pawn to attack the knight on f6. But in fact, um, it doesn't work because black has the tempo advantage in this exchange. So black takes uh, like so, c takes d3, and is threatening to take uh, a second uh, major piece down here. So it would be two pieces for one if uh, if white takes the knight up there. Um, as recommended by Lychess, my opponent thought better of it and took with the queen. I was then able to uh, move my knight away from danger to a very acceptable square in French defence, which is uh, d7. So there we are. Uh, you can see its advantage, uh, quite a major advantage to black um, within seven or actually within uh, five moves of the game, of the start of the game. Um, however, things continue to develop. You know, quite an interesting way. Uh, we are following quite a few of the recommended moves, uh, Lychess's recommended moves, which is nice to see. Um, I saw this move here, aiming to get my knight in here. This is a nice square for the knight to head to. Um, so my opponent uh, moves his knight back, releasing the C pawn. But I hop in with my knight anyway, and we get... Um, an offered exchange of knights. But I'm actually looking for exchanges of my own here. Uh, with this advantage, I'm a piece up. Um, I'm quite happy to swap off here. I've got my bishop offering to trade. The trade is declined, but it does open up another possible trade. Um, I'm quite pleased with this move, the move of my, uh, my h pawn, uh, h5, threatening that bishop who's moved who doesn't seem to have many squares to go so white definitely had a problem with his bishops in this game um, so he opens up an air hole for the bishop um, i'm 
this is the weak point of my game, the middle game, entering into the middle game. I need to do some work on middle game uh, strategy, I think, because I'm, I begin to faff around looking for which way to go this way or that way. Happily, my advantage uh, is retained. Um, I'm looking for a route through at the moment, but um, there is this pawn becomes a bit worrying to me. But still, if I can keep swapping off pieces, that uh, material advantage will continue to swing in my favor, as we can see down here. Um, I also have this nicely placed uh, knight who's under attack, but can also very conveniently block off the rook's access to uh, my back file. And so that's what I do. I bring him in. Um, so uh, white manages to claw back some material in this process. However, I'm able to attack the queen and again to attack the queen and protect my knight. Now, this looks more threatening than it is, the queen on, uh, on the seventh file, uh, because I can continue my attack in this way, getting in a check on the king. Now, this is a move I did not see. This is a very nice move here. Well, it's not that I didn't see that I could advance my pawn. I simply didn't do it. But uh, it puts black in, under a lot of pressure. Um, let's just see what happens if we do advance the pawn. Where are we? Um, oh, I castled instead. So instead of castling, if we advance the pawn here, um, here black has uh, some fairly unpleasant choices. What happens if he moves? Uh, sorry, white has some fairly unpleasant choices because we can, we have a lot of activity. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to the castle. King, uh, I castle, we get this advance of the pawn. This is the biggest threat that white fa uh, black faces in this game. And um, it's here where this advance of this pawn is very nice. It, 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 it uh, frustrates it frustrates white's attempt to uh, get any advantage with white's pawn on b6 um, because we have this uh, bishop. The pawn can simply take the bishop. The king takes back. Uh, we're now safe from any threat of this pawn uh, promoting. Uh, we have this nice double battery coming in here to uh, attack the pawn if it does promote and to swap off the queen's um, if, if, if that scenario happens. Uh, it didn't, however, happen. What we had was uh, I offered a queen. So I offered queen to swap off queens. Lichess doesn't like this move very much. Um, I think it's because there is an option um, here of bringing in the rook, which could cause some problems to me. Um, now, I think in this situation, White may be able to promote. We're sort of struggling here as black. White gets in this move. At the very least, what white gets is um, now a parity of material. So the material advantage disappears. Um, white has two, two, uh, two major pieces here, and so does black um, and the rooks. And one, two, three, four, five to one, two, three, four, five pawns. So there's a complete material parity. Now, there's simply a positional advantage for black in this situation. So there was an opportunity to um, claw back material and um, to claw back um, some degree of equality in this game because of this rather weak offer on my part to, uh, of the queens back here when in fact the advance of old Harry the H pawn would have been a stronger play. But I figured if we swap off pieces, the advantage continues to build in my favour. And I'm happy to say that um, the, the um, rook, to, uh, rook to A7 was not found, and so it gave me um, the ability to block off anyway for the promotion of the B pawn. In this way, the B pawn has now gone. And so uh, we're hoovering up pawns here at quite a rate and getting in the check. So now, now this really is game over for, for um, 
white. And in fact, time was running very low. It was a race. I expected that I would win on time. But this is how things developed. Uh, I'm still looking for a way through. So black, uh, white builds up this defense, bring in another piece, um, prevent white from taking that bishop, offering to swap off rooks, which is what happens. And now I'm making use of my pawn, heading towards promotion, which forces uh, the knight to uh, get off the table. <laughs> the knight is taken. And so we have a massive advantage now. Um, and this is how things play out. We get in this check. Uh, this knight is nicely defended by the bishop here. And it manoeuvres the king into a position here. And with one second remaining on the clock, we got in this very nice checkmate at the end. That is to say, there's just one second remaining on white's clock. Black still had uh, a couple of minutes, I think, left. And we found right at the end, the dying second of the of of of, uh, of the game, this nice little checkmate at the end, and so that was that. But really, it all came down to that um, early blunder of the um, the knight to f the which move was it knight to um, g two sorry knight g to e two was the blunder which locked in the bishop which I was then able to pick up um, as a nice free piece, really, and move my piece out of danger. OK, so uh, that is uh, that is that. And I guess the lesson is uh, be careful in the very early setup when the center is crowded that you don't end up losing a piece by by trapping it with your, the surrounding pieces. So that's all from me today. David Hurley of uh, EasyChessTips.com, your pub chess bluffer. 